finished. Guys, couldn't be more excited. As you guys know, uh, we're doing a lot of great stuff. And, and one of the great stuff that we want to bring into the SwiftBreak ecosystem is Solana ID. So warm welcome to the co-founder, Simon. Very excited to have you on the show. Uh, yeah, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you, Cyrus. Happy to be here. Looking forward to launch on, on Swissburg as well. Um, a lot of stuff going on right now. My, my head is a bit full of stuff um, throughout all the segments you can imagine in the company. Um, but we're hyped. It's going good. Perfect. So uh, what is this, the big mission behind Solon ID? What, what, uh, what, yeah, what problem are you guys solving? What's your mission? Yeah, there's there's a few layers to it. Um, I always like to start with a with a very short story from my co-founder. Um, he's a performance marketer. He used to have his own marketing agency, and he knows Instagram, Facebook, and everything by heart, right? And he sits behind the dashboard. He he sees what kind of data we leave in the internet, what traces we leave, and what you can do with it, right? Because he was the right. one who has built marketing funnels on top of those data points, and he got scared after a while. <laughs> like after six years working in performance marketing, he was like shit, those companies know so much about these people. <laughs> and I have so much power with my ads <laughs> over those people, how to influence them. And those people have no idea. <laughs> you know, right. like they, they don't see what's happening behind the curtain and they're completely cut, cut out of this loop. Um, right. That moment, he was like, I don't really want to be in that industry. <laughs> like he right. was like, I need to, I want somewhere else. And then I'm this kind of entrepreneurial guy, always ideas, you know, like some are stupid, some are really good. And then mm -hmm. I had this really good idea um, to revolutionize the the ad model, uh, how it's how how it is in the internet, uh, with right. a, with an ident identity twist with decentralized ID, where people actually own their data, and that's where mm -hmm. Solana ID came from. Um, we basically want to help people to loop them in the in the financial loop from data monetization with a data to earn model. We want to give more power over the data points to the user, and while this all sounds great and everyone gets that, no one really cares about it as long as the UI sucks. So Solana ID wants to build um, seamless UI and great user experience while preserving privacy and giving back value to the user who actually owns the data and is currently selling it for free to companies who make billions of dollars with it. Right. That's the journey one. Yeah, I mean, look, that's the the whole thing of Web3. I mean, I think so if, if you don't have an identity, well, <laughs> well <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it's something uh, as not as rewardful. And I think so it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, why do you feel it's the right timing uh, for, I would say, this mission? Mm -hmm. As you said right now, um, Web3 gave us the, the open window for this. Before it was very hard because we didn't really have the tools as well in our toolbox to build systems like this. Um, then we now, now we have this kind of renaissance of ZK tech, zero knowledge technology. Um, yeah. It's been around. People know cryptography. People knew ZK tech, but no one was really working on it. Um, since crypto is booming, we have so much money in that industry, and research has been done. And the, we have the tools in the toolbox to build systems where data ownership, you know, is clear, um, where the user is in control of data, and where we can revolutionize things that has been done in Web two that could look different in web three. And we're right at this, you know, at this, at this transition, which might take years and it is taking years currently. Um, right. But if you want, if you want to, if you want to jump on a mission, like we're on, you have to do it, I think right now, um, because if you start too late, someone else did it already. If you start too early, which people did, you'll die because no one gives a shit. So I think right now we're actually in the sweet spot. Yeah, I definitely uh, b believe that. Um... Uh, there's definitely still the big thing about investing in crypto, but uh, there's more and more applications, social media applications that really do uh, give the, some data out. And, and I think so it's definitely the right time to start building that entity that will finally give uh, people to be rewarded, but as well build maybe probably more meaningful uh, a life on the Web3, right? Because uh, at the end, if you do believe that your identity has some value, you're probably going to do more things uh, that's going to bring more value to your identity, but to the community and how you pass it on in a very meritocratic way. Um, so 100% yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, like, look, Tyrus, I think there's two sides to the coin. We have businesses and we have users, right? We can dive into this as well later on. But um, you, have, you have businesses who are basically in Web3 right now, need to acquire users and do some sort of marketing, right? Um, and, and needs to do advertisement. In Web3, advertisement currently kind of sucks. You know, like the Web2 two, Web two tools don't really work. We have new Web3 tools, 
but they're kind of, you know, shotgun method, throwing shit at the wall, seeing what sticks. It's not really data-driven target marketing. So if I put someone like my co-founder who comes from a data-driven marketing background in Web3, he's like, what the heck is going on here? Like, <laughs> we're just throwing money at the wall, you know, like we were acquiring, we we're paying KOL so much money. I don't even know if those users will ever pay a dime to our product. Like they, didn't, they, they don't give a shit. So I think we can, you can improve the marketing model. And on the B2C side as well, for users, we can, we can give users an identity in Web3, which they don't have right now because we are so private, <laughs> which is nice, but it's a fine line, right? You want to be private, but you also, want to, you also want to have a nice user experience. And that requires some profile data, some, some user data, behavior data. And we're kind of trying to... Uh, talking about uh, a little bit uh, the, the the founders themselves and the team, maybe you could g give us maybe a quick uh, note on their background and, and and on the team. Definitely. Um, would you like to see see faces to that? Then I can share the team slide. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, so we have yeah four people in the in the core team uh, who kind of came up with the idea. Um, you see my co-founder Pierre um, on the right corner there, who I was talking about. He was running his marketing agency for a few years basically making millions for other people, but not himself. And then <laughs> he decided also at a certain moment, maybe I should start selling my own product. Um, then we have two people with strong uh, tech background because obviously um, Pierre and myself, we are marketing and business and sales. And then we definitely need tech in the team if you want to build a crypto software product. So um, we are very lucky. So we found two very good and skilled devs. Marvin is our CTO, um, basically doing everything right now <laughs> from, from A to Z. Uh, full stack dev, um, very, very skilled in Web2, uh, has a Web3 stack as well, Solidity Rust, um, and did a few startups before us, also in, in CTO roles, um, had a few exits as well in startups he worked in. Uh, so I think perfect fit for us. And then Marco is our kind of um, head of science, as I sometimes call him, um, because uh, yeah, he comes with like his PhDs and masters and whatsoever. I think now he even got a Lord title gifted for his wedding. So now he's a professor, Lord Dr. Bézier. Um, but yeah, he's just a smart guy. He helps us with the algorithms we're building for scoring. There's some machine learning in our product as well, um, where he can give value. Um, and he also has built his own Web3 dev agency before that. Um, that's actually where he educated Marvin uh, to be a skilled Web3 developer. Uh, and he has a good network of Very devs cool. as well, which will be valuable for us in the future. Um, yeah, and myself, I've been um, doing a lot of things in the past. Um, Ended up in the financial industry, financial services for a while, studied finance and business in Frankfurt, um, then joined a venture capital fund. I always had a passion for VC. Uh, I love to, you know, investigate companies, understand how they work, um, see yeah. the future potential. Uh, I really love venture capital and my big motivation is to go on the other side of the table again at a certain point um, on, on the buy side. Um, but to get there, I want to have at least one exit. And that's what I'm working on right now with this company. Um, so I started um, a little bit more than one year ago to leave the VC fund and join uh, this current journey venture, which is a bit more risky, but definitely fun and hopefully rewarding in the future. Uh, yeah. And yeah, that's the core team from from Solanity. Very very cool. And and can you maybe talk about a little about like if there are investors behind today or the community uh, of Solanity? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we did close a seed a pre seed round. Um, just recently, actually, um, it has been, I think, um, like two weeks now that's officially closed. Uh, so we raised $250,000, um, uh, blockchain founders group, uh, was one of the leading, um, funds there. It's a German VC fund. They also accelerated us, um, last year with, with a product before Salon ID, also identity related. Cool. And then, um, yeah, now they gave the ticket for the pre-seed round. Then we have G20, uh, G20 strategies, who are going to be our market maker. But I wanted them also to put money behind their work. So they invested in our pre-seed round through the same terms as everyone else. Um, cool. So we have that covered. And then the last one who is mentionable, I think, or worth mentioning would be um, the ZK Pass ecosystem fund. So ZK Pass is one of the best ZK technology provider uh, these days, chain agnostic. Um, mm -hmm. They now want to capture Solana and instead of going there by themselves, they decided to um, basically send us <laughs> that way using their tech stack. Um, and as part of that technology deal, um, I also told them to have have them in our pre-seed round. So they are incentivized to push us. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the pre-seed round for now with the investor cap table. Um, also worth mentioning, we are backed by the foundation, Solana Foundation. So they gave us an, uh, what they call an instant grant. Uh, it's a small grant from the, from the foundation. Yeah. Um, so we're, 
close contact with Foundation and also Solana uh, Labs because they obviously has ha had their own identity endeavors on Solana. Um, and I wanted to make sure that they don't build their own ID solution next to ours. So that's why we're also in touch with them and everything's fine. Um, we're planning to build the flagship ID protocol for Solana. Very, very cool. Uh, look, I, I couldn't uh, be very happy to hear what you're just saying. The, the maybe the next question is like, why did you guys uh, think about Solana? I mean, I mean, I imagine there was a lot of different protocols that you guys looked at. Why, yeah. why do you guys choose Solana? At, uh, yeah, why did you guys choose Solana? Yeah, I think two reasons that I can give. I could probably talk for a long while right now, but let me, let me break it down to two main reasons. Um, we needed a blockchain that has already a good amount of useful applications that are frequented by real users because we want to put our product to work. We're building a middleware. We need users that claim their Solana identity and we need dApps to integrate that ID. If we don't right. have dApps, if we don't have users, we can tinker in our garage all day long. We won't yeah. find any product market fit because no one gives us feedback. So that's a, that's a check. Solana, you have great apps. Solana, you have users already right now. So that's cool. Then second point, who are we competing with? You know, we looked at various ecosystems, what's out there, you know, who's doing identity? who's trying to improve how marketing and advertisement is being done, uh, who's working on things like anti-civil, error distribution, all use cases we can do with Solana ID. Mm -hmm. And on Solana, it's pretty scarce. It's a pretty blue ocean. So we have a market and we have little competition, little to no competition. So there was a no-brainer for us to double, to double down on, on that ecosystem, basically. Very cool. Yeah, I couldn't. Uh, I was just wearing a Solana boxer short, so you know I'm a, I'm, I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of Solana for sure as well. Uh, very cool. Uh, look, um, we just checked the mission. We talked about the fact that the people behind are great. Uh, maybe now, what a lot of people are obviously very excited about is to understand a bit the product and how is it, you know, different. I mean, not there's that there's so many IDs uh, yet on the on chain. But maybe you could walk us through a bit what you've built already, the prototype, and uh, yeah, yeah, show us a bit how it works. Let's do that. So the current state of the product um, is, let's call it proof of concept still. Okay, so we do have a product out. It's on POC stage. You can also call it MVP, whatever you want. Um, but the actual Solana ID, the actual product is going to launch around September, October this year. So um, second half of, of 2024. But still, we wanted to push something out. But um, what you see here, basically, the Solana ID dashboard, we call it the solid hub, um, the user interface that you see when you basically want to log in for the first time to your Solana ID account, um, that is not live yet. So we do have all the product um, figmas uh, and mockups done, and we're working now on the actual product. Um, but what's live already is what we call the priority pass. So before I talk more about the current state and, and, and about Solana ID itself, um, let's check what the, what the solid, solid priority pass is. Um, it is essentially a waiting list to claim your Solana ID. So By the way, people that, are, people that are listening to this, go directly on solana.id and please go for, uh, yeah, work this out as you're going to think. Because you'll, you'll hear now why. Um, it's, it's, it's right, Cyrus. So it, it is literally your waiting list. The earlier you sign up, the better your spot on the waiting list is. And it will definitely have a financial um, impact on you if you're, if you're early. Uh, I can I can tell you that much. Um, and you see some of the perks that you get on the page. You can check it out by yourself. But basically, um, we do our own solid airdrop, which is obviously already curated because that's something Solana ID stands for, curated airdrops to good people that are genuine contributors you know, uh, to the ecosystem. So we're trying to do the airdrop more exclusive, um, cut down the allocation for people that are um, basically not adding too much value to our ecosystem and give Farmer. more to the people that are adding. <laughs> Yeah. So and yeah, this this is this is basically um, how how we do it. We um, have the we have the the sign up um, with any kind of Solana wallet that you have. I already minted my priority pass. Um, obviously, I have a very good lane number because I was very early. Um, if you sign up right now, you will. Be you did get from run hundreds. from someone. <laughs> <laughs> from run the I team. Did, <laughs> I think it's not actually I think it's not even someone from the team. There's someone no. on, on number one and you will see why. Um because you can improve the lane number on various sure. factors. Um we do an on-chain analysis, which we call the solid score. This will also be a core part of the actual product later, the Solana ID. 
we have like we're building a very sophisticated on-chain analysis we're looking at a lot of stuff that you did with your with your wallet on chain so if it's a fresh wallet your score might be a little lower obviously but if you connect a wallet that has a history age of the wallet transactions holdings um what kind of assets you have the diversity of it DeFi interactions and so on will all flow into that score um in the solana id later you can add multiple wallets because people always ask okay i have 100 wallets (laughs) what do i do i want to have them all in my id um, you can add multiple wallets. We don't link them together on chain, so no one can actually, you know, put the put the points together. But we will claim we will get the data from all of them and put them all in one score. Now, if my score is good, if I signed up early, and if I did the zero knowledge verifications, which you can do in the second step, um, yeah. you will improve your your number. So you can verify your email. That's straightforward. Just a one time password. No zk tag here not needed. Um, you can do your X verification. You can do your Discord verification. You can um, use one of our partners, which is Fitchin and also Swissborg. It's going to be live next week, probably. Um, so you can you can verify account ownership of our partners, um, or you can verify account ownership of socials. Um, and then this will boost your lane number. And if you're still not happy with your lane number, you can proceed and say, hey, I have my referral link now. So I'm going to share that referral link with all my friends. Um, and when they click on that link and mint their pass, then they will turn from a pending referral into a verified referral. And this will boost your number as well. You will again climb up the ladder. And the best part is the priority pass costs around 0.02 sol to mint, which is pretty cheap. It's a couple of dollars. But if you refer someone, you get half of that. So some people, they already re- referred quite some people. So you can actually earn some money as well. Oh, nice. The first person, they, they already earned 136. So you can basically just yeah claim your rewards. And then um, you get them paid out uh, onto your onto your Solana wallet whenever you want. Um, and then, yeah, you made some money. I just earned seven dollars. Good nice. day. Nice. That's a, a very cool way to and 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 maybe you know without revealing you know the whole you know big big thing. How do you see this evolving, and how how do you see that? How yeah, how do you see the product evolving a bit? Yeah. So, like I said, um. Obviously, we're looking to to build this, right? Like the the priority, uh, not the priority pass, but the the actual um, the actual hub, right? Uh, for right. for the users, to give you a very exclusive sneak peek of what we'll launch very soon. Um, we can go into our into our designs already. Um, so you have your profile page, you have your solid score, um, you have your wallets that you connected. That can be a few wallets. We also do on-chain analysis on other chains. We're going to start with EVM. We're going to add Bitcoin. So we can you know, build a very holistic identity profile okay. of your digital self and then bring this to the Solana ecosystem um, and analyze basically everything on it and give you an overall score. Um, and then we have a lot of possible um, integrations we can do for the solid vault, which is where your credentials are in. Um, technically, we don't store data on our servers. There's no right. centralized data data um, storage. Um, like we always have data points either directly on your device stored with you as credentials, verifiable credentials, and then zero knowledge proofs on chain. If a zk proof is on chain, there's literally no data point that is that can identify you as anything on chain. It's always just a check mark that says, "Yo, I have a Google account. Yo, I have more than ten thousand followers on Twitter." Yep. Uh, I have that role in Discord. So those CK proofs you can send on chain to help DApps make better decisions. And you can fill up your solid vault vaults with a lot of different um, kind of credentials. And we will build that out as we see demand. If a DApp wants to see more KYC checks, we'll enable a KYC function here. If a DApp wants to see to see uh, liveliness checks, we, we're going to do liveliness check. Um, we're in touch with a biometrics company, so we might add a palm scan, so you can make a scan of your right. of your palm. Um, to have a, no duplicate accounts on Solana ID, we can all do that in the Solid Vault, and we're working on this on this stuff right now. After the after we just launched the, the priority pass that I showed earlier, um, very cool. Maybe to b- one more feature, then I, I stop rambling. Um, I'm pretty proud of the privacy control. I think that's a pretty cool cool thing. Um, so basically, you have like a history of of um, of verify uh, of verify verification checks mm-hmm. where, where you can see. Um, when 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 I navigate on chain, when I move around with my wallets, uh, those apps they kind of um, tapped into my zk proofs. They wanted to see some data of my of me. Um, they, like like I said earlier, they never see PII, they never see personal identifiable data. No, but maybe yeah, you yeah. still you still don't want to share something with someone. So 
we are all about control and optionality. Very um, cool. If you opt out, you can opt out. You will lose the perks, right? You, you won't get Jupyter trading discounts anymore um, that are for power users uh, if you opt out from their verification checks. Um, but maybe you don't want them to see anything, right? So you can always opt out and stuff um, and, and also track how much, um, how much data points you, you want to, sh to show just following our kind of value set of optionality and um, user control. Very, very cool, Simon. Maybe you could uh, walk us through, because you just you said something about like the power user for Jupyter. I think that was a good example. Maybe can you you know walk us through some use case that you have in mind that you believe the Solon ID could bring uh, to uh, different dApps and therefore get rewarded in a, in a, in a great way? Yeah, let's first check um, maybe quickly how, how the ad banner could look like. Um, so let's say you are navigating on a, on a Solana app like Drip um, or any other app that we use as what we call a display agent. Um, yep. So those yep. apps, they could be some third parties that said, hey, we want to make some extra money. Um, you can integrate your perk, your perk banners at our page. So when you log in with a wallet to Drip and that wallet has a Solana ID, we know kind of what preferences you have, right? And we can show you a targeted perk window, you can call it an advertisement pop up, whatever you want, we call yeah. it perks, they call it um, and it could be a trading fee discount on flash trade, for example, because you we identified you, you do a lot of trading on chain, and you have some money on your bank account. <laughs> Maybe that's yeah. all we need to know. Um, yeah. And then flash trade decides to put out advertisement targeted to those kind of users, and you will get 10% um, discount on on trading fees for one month, for example, that's a use case. Right. Um, very, very, very straightforward. Now, um, another thing we're doing right now is um, we're running some um, we're running some some use case posts on our on our X page um, to kind of showcase exactly what you just asked to me because you say okay what can I do with Solana ID uh, and we get the question a lot so um, before we even build before we even building any integrations right, because that's something we're still on our to do we're not there yet uh, we want to showcase already what would be possible. Um, so let's check maybe the, the Orca um, use case. Um, there would be another one. How could you use your Solana ID uh, with Orca? And again, you log into your Orca account uh, with your yep. wallet that has a Solana ID, and you might get the pop-up again. You know, Now it's not on a third-party app. Now it's directly in Orca. They have integrated us, and they are a partner of us, and they want to target their users more, um, more specifically. And then you might get enhanced private trading privileges. So... Um, you might get exclusive access to some tools that are not live for everyone yet, um, or a custom interface, something like this. Uh, you could also get the discount on the trading fees again, like on, on other DEXs as well. Um, so those are some things you can do with Solana ID. Uh, maybe two more exciting things um, that are not DeFi, uh, which is one, uh, whitelist spots for curated NFT uh, communities. Right. We're working together with um, a project called Hermans, and they literally launched what we're building before we were ready to ready to build it. We were just too late, so they built it themselves. But for me, this is like a signal that what we're doing is is, is the right thing. Yeah, there was a there is an NFT collection on Solana that did a similar curation system as what we're building for NFT projects to whitelist right. the right community for your project. Because NFTs is all about community. So when you when you launch a new NFT project and you want to um, put a whitelist out, you should find people that are that align with your values, maybe, or that are just um, good contributors to your community. You want to you want to give them the first entry to your community, the better price. In the past, it was very tricky to do that. You just put a whitelist out, and whoever, whoever is first basically gets the spot, right? right. Um, now, what the Hermans did, which sadly kind of happened before we were ready, so they basically built something very similar to what we're building now, right. <laughs> but we're collaborating with them. We're in close contact, we have a marketing partnership. Um, so they built a creation system. You connect your wallets, they, they use Matrica for this. Um, and then they analyze your activity on chain, they give you a score as well. And then based on your score, you get access to the whitelist groups. But that's a use case. What we will do with Solana ID, we will help NFT communities um, to create their, their whitelists. And the same thing you can apply to airdrops, which is still okay. a huge kind of fuck up on Solana. Like airdrops have been not so great and every team is basically tinkering on their own curation system to identify the right airdrop audience we believe they should not spend or, or waste their time on building curation systems for airdrops they should build their fucking product yeah for sure. whatever it is, 
and they should outsource the like efficient airdrop allocation um, or airdropping uh, to someone like us. And we will do it for the whole ecosystem. I think that's the, the way forward. And that's another good use case. As a user, then you can basically expect to get airdrops if you have a good data backpack on Solana ID, which is great. You can just get free money from being a good user. Yep, I love that. I, I definitely believe that uh, airdrops is definitely a thing that uh, very few people have leverage in a good way. Uh, yeah. And uh, regardless of the ecosystem, but there's definitely mm -hmm. a lot of things that have done in the wrong way, and that could be massively improved uh, through so many different angles. Um, yeah, I think so that that that's that's something that I'm very excited about. And really cool how the product is already uh, built and how and, and where you guys heading. It looks really mm -hmm. exactly, uh, I think so, on point of uh, what people need and how we could bring finally more, uh, yeah, better use cases to on-chain activities. Uh, yeah. Is there anything yeah. else that you want to add to 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 the product itself that we, we maybe have not covered? Um, maybe just lastly to double down on that point, we always get this feedback from community um, some, some people, even at the priority pass, they're like, Hey, why don't you just do a, um, Twitter API call, you know, like all the other apps where you just click a button, you get forwarded to Twitter, you click on authorize and authorize basically means, yeah. yes, please sell, sell my soul to that third party app. Uh, it's fine. Um, and then you go back, back to the third party app and you shared all access to your Twitter account with that random that's third party horrible. app. Um, that's, that's how we do it right now. And I click on that button as well because it's easy and I don't have an option. Yeah. Um, so we tell those people, look, understand that we're trying to help you to exchange data points from yourself with third parties to identify as whatever you want to identify as without actually showing them those data points. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's that, that is zero knowledge technology. And that is, um, I think it's very powerful. Uh, we can do a lot of things with that. And yes, it is a bit more tricky right now. The user experience is not there yet. It's not as easy as, you know, um, as before. But right now for us, like with ZK Pass, with our tech partner, like we're building really cool shit with them and it works so well. Like if you try out the priority pass on desktop, the only friction you have is you need to install a, a browser extension. Um, so yeah. you need to install a browser extension. It's called Transcate. If you have that in your browser, one, one installation, then you just click two buttons. You click on verify on our pass, you get forwarded to Twitter, you click on verify on Twitter in a small pop-up from the extension, and you have your ZK proof, and our app receives the green check mark that you own that profile. Yeah. And, and that's basically the mission of Solana D, like keeping user experience as easy as possible while maintaining privacy. Um, just a point I want to want to double click on sometimes to make people understand that we're early in this tech, but it's worth, I think, waiting for good good results here. 100%. A uh, hundred percent. So you guys, you, you, you guys essentially have already uh, done your private round, like the first private round, which was with few VCs and few yeah. strategic investors that you guys are already working with. I think that's always a smart way to bring uh, and, you know, make sure that you're bringing investors that will use the product or uh, at the least will be strongly aligned with, with your performance. I think so that's the, the best way to, to, to build these things. Uh, the idea is to um, to eventually get to uh, do the alpha opportunity. I think so. Next month is that is that correct? Yeah, and yeah that's then, actually end of August. Cool. Alpha deal. Yeah, the alpha deal, and then and hopefully uh, right after do a successful launch on Workpad. Um, you know, what do you guys have as objective to raise? Is there already something that you guys want to? Is already something crystal clear about that? Yeah. So on the alpha, we're going to do 500K um, for Very the cool. alpha platform. 500, 550. That's the, the ballpark we're, we're looking for. Um, and right now, like in the past days, we kind of structured everything um, to have the, the right vaults and everything. Um, I think we're going to announce the first details about that next week. Okay, great. And do we know roughly the FDV or is that still in, in the... No, that's clear. That's crystal clear. Um, we're following a pretty fair model. Um, we're doing a low, low FTV, high float launch eventually on the at the TG, um, deviating a bit from what has been done in the past months. So, fifteen million FTV is going to be the private round, the seed round that we're in right now, uh, where Swissbox is going to be part of one five. Great, perfect, really, really cool. Maybe the 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 last thing, uh, maybe we should cover before that. Is more on the promotion mm -hmm. side, like how 
as as you know, it, um, the beautiful way of crypto is uh, it's not necessarily the best products or the most driven people that make the best uh, price action, but something mm -hmm. is going to growth and it is what it is. However, even if the growth is not happening on the first stage and people are really good at what they're doing, it's probably happening on the second stage. And we saw that with Ave, for example, TH Land was in the second cycle, no, not much was using it. Then in the, in the third cycle, last cycle, I mean, they have done a killing, right? So uh, eventually fundamentals do pay off. But the like, how do you see like the traction uh for now and how do you you know what's your targets like mm. would you like to have eventually 1 million uh, ids salon ids users yeah. by 2026 or what's the the crazy numbers that you guys want to reach and then how do you yeah. how are we going to get there yeah um no spot on um spot on with what you're saying uh, cyrus uh there's so many projects that have so much traction investment great kpis but no real use cases um you can learn shit from them you can learn marketing from them you can learn community from them you shouldn't learn product from them so you just that's what i'm looking at those projects and we're trying to um yeah basically do the best in both worlds like we, we actually we're struggling a lot with staying with a good reputation you know like being real to ourselves not selling our souls <laughs> and, and and not jumping in the in the kl trap of like just chilling shit and going everywhere and guerrilla marketing yeah um, but to a certain extent to a certain extent we have to do that <laughs> i think yeah. to to be successful in crypto and i think we're, we're trying to balance on that on that road that's also why our, why our socials right now on our twitter um is like not huge right we have like 5k on twitter we're like mm -hmm. um we're growing our community on discord on on like to 2k people right now because it's all organically and it's just because we're like talking about our product and people like it and they join uh, which is great but we need to bump those numbers up and we have plans for that especially in august right now we do kol activations very selected we call them more ambassadors because we are very picky with the people we work with um we do some minor kols that are just talking about our token on twitter um, but we don't spend a lot of money on that. But we also have people that come in like Caleb, Caleb Sol, um, who's like a larger Solana KOL. And they're just yeah. good people. They're product people. They, I talk with them on Zoom. You know, I like, I like their opinions. Like I like to be in spaces with them. Um, so they talk about our product. You will see, I, I'll be on a round table with Caleb, Caleb again on Friday evening, I think. Um, yeah. Then we partnered up with uh, the guys from IBC, Mario Nafual. Um, huge, huge reach on on socials. Our first roundtable is on the 14th of um, August. IBC actually, by the way, also invested in the pre-seed round. So it's good to have partners like that on the side. They have more than 100,000 followers, uh, 100,000 viewers on their spaces, um, which is crazy on Twitter. So I think with those kind of activations, we have more like that coming up. We will reach more people. And I think we're going to grow the community exponentially in the next month um, towards TGE. Definitely, no doubt about it. And then in terms of ambitious goals uh, for Solana ID, um, actually, we literally put our um, vesting for the team token allocation based on milestones, not only time. So our, our time vesting is very long. Like the team has a cliff of 15 months, you know, and then we vest for like three years. So it's it's really long, the, the our reward as a team. But yeah. I kind of build a backdoor to that with milestones. And those milestones are actually Solana ID users. Uh, the first milestone is 250,000 users, which is very realistic. That's yeah. something I think we can we can get done this year, maybe early next year. Then the maybe next remind, milestone. Remind hmm. me how many uh, we have. Like, like I mean, how many uh, you think we have uh, uh, individual wallets uh, that are are in in Solana ecosystem? Do you know roughly what it is? I mean, I know the, the wallet number, right? But it's like more than 15 million. But it's difficult because you have a lot of, you know, you have some bots going on and shit. So um, the the wallet count is it's in the like it's in the two two digit millions. Yeah. On Solana, but how do you identify unique humans, right? Um, yeah, that's hard it's not. Now. It's not. It's not a world coin chain. Um, but if we have oh. if we have an ID on Solana with a lot of IDs issued, we can count that number and tell people, look, right. we have. 1 million real humans or users on Solana. Um, and that's what we're looking at. Like we're looking at uh, like 10 million, 5 million, that those are the numbers, those are the milestones of Solana ID users. And uh, we're looking at also to get the team allocation paid out to us. <laughs> so right. yeah, we have we have those ambitious goals because obviously the Solana ecosystem is growing as well. 
the adoption is growing, the apps are growing, we're in this growth cycle that grows exponentially. So I'm pretty bullish that we can also distribute a lot of ideas to people in the, in the coming years. Um, and the top goal is 15 million. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, that's really awesome. That's, that's really good. I definitely do believe that, yeah, uh, it's very important to have your, you know, your community and reward them the best way, but at the same time to reach and build communities, you have to find, you know, great ways to bring affluent people that could bring a lot of more people behind. And, uh, yeah, for this, there's definitely, uh, uh, some great people out there and some others that are not the, maybe the best, uh, um, yes, uh, for sure about that. So we talked about the growth, uh, and, and now let's talk about one of the most important thing is the perks within the token, because you could build a great technology and a great product, but if the token is not really attached to it, it doesn't really bring the, the best, uh, out of it in terms of price action and building the community with that. So yeah, walk us through a bit, the, the digital ID token, uh, you know, yeah. what's the utility behind and yeah, go for it. Yep. Easy. That's no problem. Uh, we've ha we've done a lot of brainstorming around the topic, and since day one, it's clear we need a token for our product actually. And then we we actually did the the timeline for it. Um, but we knew we needed because uh, there's a few utilities that are useful. I'm a fan of keeping token utilities simple, so I won't do a I won't run you through a white paper now. I'll give you the three main main utilities of of the token. Um, that, that is uh, basically on the B2B and on the B2C side. For users, there is identity or we call it reputation staking. You can lock your solid tokens behind your ID account. What does that okay. mean? We basically build a interoperable collateral system with that <laughs> because if you lock tokens behind your ID account, we improve your solid score. So we, we, we improve the aggregate of your ID account that, app, that verifiers apps can query to make business decisions. Those business decisions are based on a score that looks at past behavior. That's what we do, right? We look at past right. behavior, we put a score on it, and it's a prediction score of future behavior. Now, yep. you might behave differently in the future. So it doesn't send super strong signals. If we want to do shit like under collateralized loans or collateral free loans, those DeFi platforms might, they, they still tell me these days, mm, if you give us a prediction score, it's not strong enough. They might misbehave and misuse their score. But yep. if you put money behind the word, if you put money behind your score, that money can be slashed if you misbehave against your action. But if you put it behind your word, you improve your score, you get more perks. So in short, you lock tokens, you lock solid, you improve your, your account um, backpack, your ID backpack, you improve your score and you get more perks. The nice. perks you will get, the reward, they will outperform the, the, the value of the token. So instead of selling it, you just lock it there and you'll enjoy the, the future perks. The more you lock, the better it is. So that's that's one um, demand driving factor for the solid token on the B2C side. Um, businesses are able to pay the queries for ID data, that's our business model, um, okay. in solid tokens or in stables. If they pay in stables, all cool. If they pay in solid token, they get a slight, slightly better price. So they might want to set up a smart, smart contract, a treasury wallet, um, where they put solid tokens in to pay for the queries. Um, and that money comes back to us as a protocol, but they have to hold those solid tokens as well. It's another demand driving factor. The more apps we sign, the more users we sign, the more demand for the token um, right. should uh, should appear. And then the token is also circulating a lot because we pay the user in solid tokens for sharing the data. That's the data to earn model that's related yep. to, the, to the solution. And then the user might take that money and you know get the solid tokens and convert them into something else and sell it. But since we have solid staking, they might keep it in the in the system and just stake what they earned to improve their perks. Okay. So those cool. are the main utilities around the token. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I like it that the fact that you could uh, enhance your 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 identity with with staking your own tokens. Um, that's really cool. The the idea is to I, I imagine the idea is to really have the most liquidity first on chain. Uh, would you mm. guys be looking forward as well then to have it on different sexes and things like that? Is that is that in the pipeline yeah. as well? No, definitely. We need that, right? We need to have the token on exchanges. We need the liquidity from from the open market, let's say. Um, DEX is cool. There's a lot of liquidity on Solana DEXs as well, um, right. but it won't be enough to really drive value. So um, 
after Borgpad, we also secured a second launchpad with Fjord Foundry, a um, very reputable um, launchpad. That's the only two we're going to do. We don't yep. scatter around too much. Um, so we have two IDOs, basically. We, we go on the exchanges, uh, on the decentralized ones. And then quite soon after, a couple of weeks after the public sale, we're planning to list on exchanges. Um, we're getting already a few confirmations in right now, actually, um, because they like the product, um, but only from like, you know, maxi style um, sexes. They, they already want to list us. Um, but for the bigger ones, and we're aiming for the bigger ones, uh, we need to up our community numbers, which will happen over the next two months. Um, okay. But pretty bullish on the sex listings as well. Perfect. Uh, maybe last thing, what are you the most excited about? What's the, what's the thing that, you know, it says that in the next couple weeks to months, uh, that's going to be really driving you uh, into Nirvana, yeah. I want to see this shit become real, you know, like when, when we launched the, the priority pass and we got the first signups and we see people cashing out their uh, referral rewards and we see people signing up and, and doing their credentials. That's what I want to see. I want to see people actually using what we're building. That's that's what makes us excited as a team. Not only yeah. me, also my co-founders. Um, and we made the first revenues on the last weekend ever <laughs> because of the minting of the priority pass, right? Like a couple hundred dollars. Um, but like that shit is just exciting. You know, things start to roll. Yeah. Um, it's always great to, to collect money and investing. Sure, that's great. Um, but it doesn't really count because we're building a product that needs needs users. So in the next months, I think with all the launches that we're having coming up and with, with like scaling our team, things get quicker now. I'm pretty excited about um, the fact that people and apps will actually have use cases with us. So I think that's what, what makes me excited right now. Perfect. Well, you know, uh, to sum it up, uh, I, I'm very excited about uh, uh, Salon ID. I think so. Uh, the mission, well, as we know, getting identity on Web3 for me is essential. Uh, there's no way out of this. If not, we're not going to we're not going to make it. Uh, choosing Solana as a start, I think so is something that's really, really smart. This is where the most I, I did. I mean, on-chain users we have today. Uh, so that mm. that's and it's great for the narrative, I believe too, because Solana's tokens are doing extremely well. Uh, the people behind uh, Simon, the rest of the teams, you seem like to be smart people. Uh, and uh, there's hustlers, but as well techies, which is good. So that's a the big point for the the team. Uh, the product, it's a great start and is looking really good and good way to to not be building everything by scratch because that's, I think, so to be able to take advantage on what has been built and then plug it into a different ecosystem. I think so this is definitely a big, 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 big plus and how you'll be yep. able to, you know, monetize for adver advertisement on, on chain and all that. And the use cases with airdrops, I think, so this is definitely a, a big plus and much more if I forgot some use cases here uh, mm -hmm. and for NFTs and other things that, that definitely is going to come in the cycle. Uh, the token itself, the, pro the sorry, the promotion, which which obviously uh, I think so. Hopefully, Swissburg going to be able to help. And again, check mm. go on Solana.id and try to mint your 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 uh, pass already or get into the line to get your pass yes. already, which is really important. Uh, and last but not least, the token has great utility, so very very attractive and a very attractive price as well. You guys are not too greedy, mm -hmm. so uh, you know when you see these FDVs that are you know, multiple hundred millions to two billions. It's always a bit weird mm. thing. You, you, it's the smartest way to start small, to bring a lot of users to get excited and then make the pump. And that's how I think yeah. that it's the best way right. then being able to keep all your tokens for you and selling it to a few people that will dump it on retail eventually. <laughs> I don't think so that's the smart move. So uh, the five P's do connect well. Uh, Simon, thank you so much for your time. I'm very looking Thank forward you. to the next alpha deal that will happen hopefully in the upcoming weeks and uh very excited to see what's going to be happening on board with that too so uh thank you so much Simon. cool pleasure to be here thanks cyrus okay.